Scene one of Lysis Trata. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae. Lysis Trata. Read by Abai. Kalonike. Read by Lianya. Mierine. Read by Lian. Lampito. Read by Clarinet Carrot. Stratilis, read by Lydia. First woman, read by Lian Yao. Second woman, read by Daphne Ma. Third woman, read by Sonia. Fourth woman, read by Sawasawaya. A woman, read by Sandra Schmidt. Chorus of women, read by Eva Davis. Slave, read by Esther Camus child read by lydia magistrate read by rob board kinesias read by zames curran old man read by alan mapstone chorus of old men read by peter tucker herald read by sean lally laconian by matt Perard. chorus of laconians read by Alan Mapstone. Athenian, read by Nemo. Chorus of Athenians, read by Thomas Peter. Market Lounger, Rathu. Narrated by K. Hand. Lysistrata by Aristophanes. Scenes in a public square at Athens afterwards before the gates of the acropolis and finally within the precincts of the citadel scene one in a public square at athens lysistrata alone ah oh, if only they had been invited to a bacchic reveling or a feast of pan or aphrodite or genetilis why the streets would have been impassable for the thronging tambourines now there's never a woman here. Ah, except my neighbor Kalonike, whom I see approaching yonder. Good day, Kalonike. Good day, Lysistrata. But pray, why this dark, forbidding face, my dear? Believe me, you don't look a bit pretty with those black, lowering brows. Oh, Kalonike, my heart is on fire. I blush for our sex. Men will have it. We are tricky and sly. And they are quite right, upon my word. Yet, look you, when the women are summoned to meet for a matter of the last importance, they lie abed instead of coming. Oh, they will come, my dear. But tis not easy, you know, for women to leave the house. One is busy pottering about her husband, another is getting the servant up, a third is putting her child asleep, or washing the brat, or feeding it. But I tell you, the business that calls them here is far and away more urgent. And why do you summon us, dear Lysistrata? What is it all about? About a big affair. And is it thick, too? Yes, indeed, both big and great. And we are not all on the spot. Oh, if it were what you suppose, there would be never an absentee. No, no, it concerns a thing I have turned about and about this way and that of many sleepless nights. It must be something mighty fine and subtle for you to have turned it about so. So fine, it means just this, Greece saved by the women. By women? Why, its salvation hangs on a poor thread then. Our country's fortunes depend on us. It is with us to undo utterly the Peloponnesians. That would be a noble deed, truly. To exterminate the Boeotians to a man. But surely you would spare the eels. For Athens' sake I will never threaten so fell a doom, trust me for that. However, if the Boeotian and Peloponnesian women join us, Greece is saved. But how should women perform so wise and glorious an achievement, we women who dwell in the retirement of the household, clad in diaphanous garments of yellow silk and long flowing gowns, decked out with flowers and shod with dainty little slippers? Nay, but those are the very sheet anchors of our salvation, those yellow tunics, those scents and slippers, those cosmetics and transparent robes. 
How so, pray? There is not a man will wield a lance against another. Quick, I will get me a yellow tunic from the dyers. Or want a shield. I'll run and put on a flowing gown. Or draw a sword. I'll haste and buy a pair of slippers this instant. Now, tell me, would not the women have done best to come? Why, they should have flown here. Ah, my dear, you'll see that like true Athenians they will do everything too late. Why, there's not a woman come from the shoreward parts, not one from Salamis. But I know for certain they embarked at daybreak. And the dames from Akarne? Why, I thought they would have been the very first to arrive. Theagana's wife, at any rate, is sure to come. She has actually been to consult Hecate. But look, here are some arrivals, and there are more behind. Aha! Now, what countrywomen may they be? They are from Anagira. Yes, upon my word, tis a levy en masse of all the female population of Anagira. Are we late, Lysistrata? Tell us, pray. What, not a word? I cannot say much for you, Mirchine. You have not bestirred yourself overmuch for an affair of such urgency. I could not find my girdle in the dark. However, if the matter is so pressing, here we are. So speak. No, but let us wait a moment more till the women of Boeotia arrive and those from the Peloponnese. Yes, that is best. Ah, here comes Lampito. Ah, good day, Lampito, dear friend from Lacadaemon. How well and handsome you look. What a rosy complexion. And how strong you seem. Why, you could strangle a bull, surely. Yes, indeed, I really think I could. "'Tis because I do gymnastics and practice the kick-dance. "'And what superb bosoms! "'La, you are feeling me as if I were a beast for sacrifice. "'And this young woman, what countrywoman is she?' "'She is a noble lady from Boeotia. "'Ah, my pretty Boeotian friend, you are as blooming as a garden.' "'Yes, on my word, and the garden is so prettily weeded too. "'And who is this?' "'Tis an honest woman, by my faith. She comes from Corinth. "'Oh, honest, no doubt, then. As honest he goes at Corinth. "'But who has called together this council of women, pray?' "'I have.' "'Well, then, tell us what you want of us.' "'With pleasure, my dear.' "'What is the most important business you wish to inform us about?' "'I will tell you. But first answer me one question.' "'What is that?' Don't you feel sad and sorry because the fathers of your children are far away from you with the army? For I'll undertake there is not one of you whose husband is not abroad at this moment. Mine has been the last five months in Thrace, looking after Eucrates. Tis seven long months since mine left me for Pylos. As for mine, if he ever does return from service, he's no sooner back than he takes down his shield again and flies back to the walls and not so much as the shadow of a lover. Since the day the Milesians betrayed us, I have never once seen an eight-inch long good miché even, to be a leathern consolation to us poor widows. Now, tell me, if I have discovered a means of ending the war, will you all second me? Yes, verily. By all the goddesses, I swear I will. Though I have to put my gown in pawn and drink the money the same day. And so will I though I must be split in two like a flatfish, and have half myself removed. And I too, why, to secure peace I will climb to the top of Mount Tegetus. Then I will out with it at last, my mighty secret. Oh, sister women, if we would compel our husbands to make peace, we must refrain. Refrain from what? Tell us, tell us. But will you do it? We will, we will, though we should die of it. We must refrain from the male organ altogether. Nay, why do you turn your backs on me? Where are you going? So you bite your lips and shake your heads, eh? Why these pale, sad looks? Why these tears? Come, will you do it, yes or no? Do you hesitate? No, I will not do it. Let the war go on. And you, my pretty flatfish, 
who declared just now they might split you in two? Anything, anything but that. Bid me go through the fire, if you will. But to rob us of the sweetest thing in all the world, my dear, dear Lizzie Strata. And you? Yes, I agree with the others. I too would sooner go through the fire. Oh, wanton, vicious sex! The poets have done well to make tragedies upon us. We are good for nothing then but love and lewdness. But you, my dear, you from hardy Sparta, if you join me, all may yet be well. Help me, second me, I conjure you. Tis a hard thing, by the two goddesses it is, for a woman to sleep alone without ever a standing weapon in her bed, but there, peace must come first. Oh, my dear, my dearest, best friend, you are the only one deserving the name of woman. But if, which the gods forbid, we do refrain altogether from what you say, should we get peace any sooner? Of course we should, by the goddesses twain. We need only sit indoors with painted cheeks and meet our mates lightly clad in transparent gowns of amorgus silk, and with our moths nicely plucked smooth, then their tools will stand like mad and they will be wild to lie with us. That will be the time to refuse, and they will hasten to make peace. I am convinced of that. Yes, just as Menelaus, when he saw Helen's naked bosom, threw away his sword, they say. But, poor devils, suppose our husbands go away and leave us? Then, as Pherecrates says, we must flay a skinned dog. That's all. Blah! <laughs> These proverbs are all idle talk. But if our husbands drag us by main force into the bedchamber... Hold on to the doorposts. But if they beat us... Then yield to their wishes, but with a bad grace. There is no pleasure for them when they do it by force. Besides... There are a thousand ways of tormenting them. Never fear, they'll soon tire of the game. There's no satisfaction for a man unless the woman shares it. Very well. If you will have it so, we agree. For ourselves, no doubt we shall persuade our husbands to conclude a fair and honest peace. But there is the Athenian populace. How are we to cure these folk of their warlike frenzy? Have no fear, we undertake to make our own people hear reason. Nay, impossible. So long as they have their trusty ships and the vast treasures stored in the temple of Athene. Ah, but we have seen to that. This very day the Acropolis will be in our hands. That is the task assigned to the older women. While we are here in council, they are going, under pretense of offering sacrifice, to seize the citadel. Well said indeed, so everything is going for the best. Come quick, Lampito, and let us bind ourselves by an inviolable oath. Recite the terms, we will swear to them. With pleasure. Where is our usheress? Now, what are you staring at, pray? Lay this shield on the earth before us, its hollow upwards, and someone bring me the victims inwards. Lisistrata, say, what oath are we to swear? What oath? Why, in Aeschylus, they sacrifice a sheep and swear over a buckler. We will do the same. No, Lysistrata, one cannot swear peace over a buckler, surely. What other oath do you prefer? Let's take a white horse and sacrifice it and swear on its entrails. But where get a white horse from? Well, what oath shall we take then? Listen to me. Let's set a great black bowl on the ground. Let's sacrifice a skin of Thasian wine into it, and take oath not to add one single drop of water. Ah, that's an oath pleases me more than I can say. Let them bring me a bowl and a skin of wine. Ah, my dears, what a noble big bowl! What a delight will be to empty it! Set the bowl down on the ground and lay your hands on the victim. Almighty goddess, persuasion, and thou, bowl, boon comrade of joy and merriment, receive this our sacrifice, and be propitious to us poor women. Oh, the fine red blood! How well it flows! 
and what a delicious savour by the goddesses twain now my dears let me swear first if you please no by the goddess of love let us decide that by lot come then lampito and all of you put your hands to the bowl and do you calonique repeat in the name of all the solemn terms i am going to recite then you must all swear and pledge yourselves by the same promises i will have naught to do whether with lover or husband i will have naught to do whether with lover or husband albeit he come to me with stiff and standing tool albeit he come to me with stiff and standing tool oh bisistrata i cannot bear it i will live at home in perfect chastity i will live at home in perfect chastity beautifully dressed and wearing a saffron coloured gown beautifully dressed and wearing a saffron coloured gown to the end i may inspire my husband with the most ardent longings to the end i may inspire my husband with the most ardent longings never will i give myself voluntarily never will i give myself voluntarily and if he has me by force and if he has me by force i will be cold as ice and never stir a limb i will be cold as ice and never stir a limb i will not lift my legs in air i will not lift my legs in air nor will i crouch with bottom upraised like carven lions on a knife handle nor will i crouch with bottom upraised like carven lions on a knife handle and if i keep my oath may i be suffered to drink of this wine and if i keep my oath may i be suffered to drink of this wine but if i break it let my bowl be filled with water but if i break it let my bowl be filled with water will you all take this oath yes yes then lo i immolate the victim she drinks enough enough my dear now let us all drink in turn to cement our friendship hark what do those cries mean tis what i was telling you the women have just occupied the acropolis so now lampito do you return to sparta to organize the plot while your comrades here remain as hostages for ourselves let us away to join the rest in the citadel and let us push the bolts well home but don't you think the men will march up against us i laugh at them neither threats nor flames shall force our doors they shall open only on the conditions i have named yes yes by the goddess of love let us keep up our all-time repute for obstinacy and spite End of scene one scene two of lisi strata this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Lysistrata by Aristophanes. Scenes in a public square at Athens, afterwards before the gates of the Acropolis, and finally within the precincts of the citadel. Scene two, before the gates of the Acropolis. Go easy, Dracus. Go easy. Why, your shoulder is all chafed by these plaguy heavy olive stocks but forward still forward man as needs must what unlooked-for things do happen to be sure in a long life ah strimodorus who would ever have thought it here we have the women who used for our misfortune to eat our bread and live in our houses daring nowadays to lay hands on the holy image of the goddess to seize the acropolis and draw bars and bolts to keep any from entering come philurgus man let's hurry thither let's lay our faggots all about the citadel and on the blazing pile burn with our hands these vile conspiratresses one and all and lycon's wife lysistrata first and foremost nay 
by demeter never will i let em laugh at me whilst i have a breath left in my body cleomenes himself the first who ever seized our citadel had to quit it to his sore dishonour spite his lacedaemonian pride he had to deliver me up his arms and slink off with a single garment to his back my word but he was filthy and ragged and what an unkempt beard to be sure he had not had a bath for six long years oh but that was a mighty siege our men were ranged seventeen deep before the gate and never left their posts even to sleep these women these enemies of euripides and all the gods shall i do nothing to hinder their inordinate insolence else let them tear down my trophies of marathon but look ye to finish our toilsome climb we have only this last steep bit left to mount verily tis no easy job without beasts of burden and how these logs do bruise my shoulder still let us on and blow up our fire and see it does not go out just as we reach our destination <sighs> blows the fire oh dear what a dreadful smoke it bites my eyes like a mad dog it is lemnos fire for sure or it would never devour my eyelids like this come on larches let's hurry let's bring succor to the goddess it's now or never <sighs> blows the fire oh dear what a confounded smoke there now there's our fire all bright and burning thank the gods now why not first put down our loads here then take a vine branch light it at the brazier and hurl it at the gate by way of battering ram if they don't answer our summons by pulling back the bolts then we set fire to the woodwork and the smoke will choke em ye gods what a smoke Phew! is there never a samos general will help me unload my burden ah oh, it shall not gall my shoulder any more <clears throat> tosses down his wood come brazier do your duty make the embers flare that i may kindle a brand i want to be the first to hurl one aid me heavenly victory let us punish for their insolent audacity the women who have seized our citadel and may we raise a trophy of triumph for success oh my dears methinks i see fire and smoke can it be a conflagration let us hurry all we can fly fly nicotique your calice and critile perish in the fire or are stifled in the smoke raised by these accursed old men and their pitiless laws but great gods can it be i come too late rising at dawn i had the utmost trouble to fill this vessel at the fountain ah oh, what a crowd there was and what a din what a rattling of water-pots servants and slave-girls pushed and thronged me however here i have it full at last and i am running to carry the water to my fellow townswomen whom our foes are plotting to burn alive news has been brought to us that a company of old doddering greybeards loaded with enormous faggots as if they wanted to heat a furnace have taken the field vomiting dreadful threats crying that they must reduce to ashes these horrible women suffer them not o oh goddess but of thy grace may i see athens and greece cured of their warlike folly tis to this end o oh, thou guardian deity of our city goddess of the golden crest that they have seized thy sanctuary be their friend and ally athena and if any man hurl against them lighted firebrands aid us to carry water to extinguish them let me be i say oh ho oh. she calls for help what is this i see ye wretched old men honest and pious folk ye cannot be who act so vilely aha here's something new a swarm of women stand posted outside to defend the gates ah oh, we frighten you do we we seem a mighty host yet you do not see the ten thousandth part of our sex oh phaedrus 
Shall we stop their cackle? Suppose one of us were to break a stick across their backs, eh? <sighs> Let us set down our water pots on the ground to be out of the way. If they should dare to offer us violence, let someone knock out two or three teeth for them, as they did to Bupalus. They won't talk so loud then. Come on, then. I await you with unflinching foot, and I will snap off your testicles like a bitch. Ooh. Silence! Ere yeah, my stick has cut short your days. Now, just you dare to touch Stratilus with the tip of your finger. And if I batter you to pieces with my fists, what will you do? I will tear out your lungs and entrails with my teeth. Ooh! What a clever poet is Euripides. How well he says that woman is the most shameless of animals. Let's pick up our water jars again, Rodope. Ah, a cursed harlot. What do you mean to do here with your water? And you, old death in life, with your fire? Is it to cremate yourself? I am going to build you a pyre to roast your female friends upon. And I, I am going to put out your fire. You put out my fire? You? Yes, you shall soon see. I don't know what prevents me from roasting you with this torch. I am getting you a bath ready to clean off the filth. A bath for me? You dirty slut, you. Yes, indeed. A nuptial bath. Do you hear that? What insolence! I am a free woman, I tell you. I will make you hold your tongue, never fear. Ah, uh, you shall never sit more among the Heliasts. Burn off her hair for her. Water, do your office. The women pitch the water in their water pots over the old men. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Was it hot? Hot, great gods, enough, enough. I'm watering you to make you bloom afresh. Alas, I am too dry. Oh, me, how I am trembling with cold. These women, have they made din enough, I wonder, with their tambourines? Bewept Adonis enough upon their terraces? I was listening to the speeches last assembly day, and Demostratus, whom heaven confound, was saying we must all go over to Sicily, and, lo, his wife was dancing round, repeating, Alas, alas, Adonis, woe is me for Adonis! Demostratus was saying we must levy Hoplites at Zacynthus, and, lo, his wife, more than half drunk, was screaming on the house roof, Weep, weep for Adonis! While that infamous mad ox was bellowing away on his side, do ye not blush, ye women, for your wild and uproarious doings? But you don't know all their effrontery yet. They abused and insulted us, then soused us with the water in their water pots, and have set us wringing out our clothes for all the world as if we had be pissed ourselves. And tis well done too, by Poseidon. We men must share the blame of their ill conduct. It is we who teach them to love riot and dissoluteness and sow the seeds of wickedness in their hearts. You see a husband go into a shop. Look you, jeweller, says he. You remember the necklace you made for my wife? Well, t'other evening, when she was dancing, the catch came open. Now, I'm bound to start for Salamis. Will you make it convenient to go up tonight to make her fastening secure? Another will go to a cobbler, a great strong fellow with a great long tool, and tell him, The strap of one of my wife's sandals presses her little toe, which is extremely sensitive. Come in about midday to supple the thing and stretch it. Now see the results. Take my own case. As a magistrate, I have enlisted rowers. I want money to pay them. And, lo, the women clap to the door in my face. But why do we stand here with arms crossed? 
bring me a crowbar. I'll chastise their insolence. Ho oh, there, my fine fellow. Addressing one of his attendant officers. What are you gaping at the crows about? Looking for a tavern, I suppose, eh? Come, crowbars here and force open the gates. I will put a hand to the work myself. No need to force the gates. I am coming out. Here I am. And why bolts and bars? What we want here is not bolts and bars and locks, but common sense. Really, my fine lady, where is my officer? I want him to tie that woman's hands behind her back. By Artemis the Virgin Goddess, if he touches me with the tip of his finger, officer of the public peace though he be, let him look out for himself. To the officer. How now, are you afraid? Caesar, I tell you, round the body. Two of you at her and have done with it. By Pandrosos, if you lay a hand on her, I'll trample you underfoot till you shit your guts. <laughs> oh, there, my guts. Where is my other officer? Bind that minx first who speaks so prettily. By Phoebe, if you touch her with one finger, you better call quick for a surgeon. What do you mean? Officer, where are you got to? Lay hold of her. Oh, but I'm going to stop your foolishness for you all. By the Tauric Artemis, if you go near her, I'll pull out your hair, scream as you like. Oh, miserable man that I am. My own officers desert me. What ho, are we to let ourselves be bested by a mob of women? Ho, oh, Scythians mine, close up your ranks and forward. By the holy goddesses, you'll have to make acquaintance with four companies of women ready for the fray and well-armed to boot. Forward, Scythians, and bind them. Forward, my gallant companions. March forth, ye vendors of grain and eggs, garlics and vegetables, keepers of taverns and bakeries, wrench and strike and tear. Come, a torrent of invective and insult. They beat the officers. Enough, enough. Now retire. Never rob the vanquished. Oh, here's a fine exploit for my officers. Uh-huh. So you thought you had only to do with a set of slave women? You do not know the ardour that fills the bosom of free-born dames. Ardour? Yes, by Apollo, ardour enough especially for the wine cup sir sir what use of words they are of no avail with wild beasts of this sort don't you know how they have just washed us down and with no very fragrant soap what would you have you should never have laid rash hands on us if you start afresh i'll knock your eyes out my delight is to stay at home as coy as a young maid without hurting anybody or moving any more than a milestone. But where the wasp, if you go stirring up the wasp's nest? Ah, oh, great gods! How to get the better of these ferocious creatures? Tis past all bearing. But come, let us try to find out the reason of the dreadful scourge. With what end in view have they seized the citadel of Granaus? the sacred shrine that is raised upon the inaccessible rock of the acropolis question them be cautious and not too credulous it would be culpable negligence not to pierce the mystery if we may addressing the women i would ask you first why ye have barred our gates to seize the treasury no more money no more war then money is the cause of the war and of all our troubles. T'was to find occasion to steal that Pisander and all the other agitators were forever raising revolutions. Well and good, but they'll never get another drachma here. What do you propose to do then, pray? You ask me that? Why, we propose to administer the treasury ourselves. You do? What is there in that to surprise you? Do we not administer the budget of household expenses? But that is not the same thing. 
how so not the same thing it is the treasury supplies the expenses of the war that's our first principle no war what and the safety of the city we will provide for that you yes just we what a sorry business yes we're going to save you whether you will or not oh the impudence of the creatures you seem annoyed but there you've got to come to it but tis the very height of iniquity we are going to save you my man but if i don't want to be saved why all the more reason but what a notion to concern yourselves with questions of peace and war we will explain our idea out with it then quick or threatening her listen and never a movement please oh it is too much for me i cannot keep my temper then look out for yourself you have more to fear than we have stop your croaking old crow you to Lisi Strutter. Now, you, say your say. Willingly. All the long time the war has lasted, we have endured in modest silence all you men did. We never allowed ourselves to open our lips. We were far from satisfied, for we knew how things were going. Often in our homes we would hear you discussing, upside down and inside out, some important turn of affairs then with sad hearts but smiling lips we would ask you well in today's assembly did they vote peace but mind your own business the husband would growl hold your tongue do and i would say no more i would not have held my tongue though not i you would have been reduced to silence by blows then well for my part i would say no more but presently I would come to know you had arrived at some fresh decision more fatally foolish than ever. Ah, my dear man, I would say, what madness next? But he would only look at me askance and say, just weave your web, do, else your cheeks will smart for ours. War is men's business. Bravo! Well said indeed. How now, wretched man? Not to let us contend against your follies was bad enough. But presently we heard you asking out loud in the open street, Is there never a man left in Athens? And no, not one, not one, you were assured in reply. Then, then we made up our minds without more delay to make common cause to save Greece. Open your ears to our wise counsels and hold your tongues, and we may yet put things on a better footing you put things indeed ah oh, tis too much the insolence of the creatures silence i say silence yourself may i die a thousand deaths ere i obey one who wears a veil if that's all that troubles you here take my veil wrap it round your head and hold your tongue then take this basket put on a girdle card wool munch beans the war shall be women's business. Lay aside your water pots. We will guard them. We will help our friends and companions. For myself, I will never weary of the dance. My knees will never grow stiff with fatigue. I will brave everything with my dear allies, on whom nature has lavished virtue, grace, boldness, cleverness, and whose wisely directed energy is going to save the state. Oh, my good gallant Lysistrata, and all my friends, be ever like a bundle of nettles. Never let your anger slacken. The winds of fortune blow our way. May gentle love and the sweet Cyprian queen shower seductive charms on our bosoms and all our person. If only we may stir so amorous a lust among the men that their tools stand stiff as sticks, we shall indeed deserve the name of peacemakers among the Greeks how will that be pray to begin with we shall not see you any more running like mad fellows to the market holding lance in fist that will be something gained anyway by the paphian goddess it will 
Now we see him, mixed up with saucepans and kitchen stuff, armed to the teeth, looking like wild corybantes. Why, of course, that's how brave men should do. Oh, but what a funny sight to behold a man wearing a gorgon's head buckler coming along to buy fish. The other day in the market, I saw a firelark with flowing ringlets. He was a horseback and was pouring into his helmet the broth he had just bought at an old dame's stall. There was a Thracian warrior, too, who was brandishing his lance like terriers in the play. He had scared a good woman selling figs into a perfect panic, and was gobbling up all her ripest fruit. And how, pray, would you propose to restore peace and order in all the countries of Greece? Tis the easiest thing in the world. Come, tell us how. I'm curious to know. When we are winding thread, and it is tangled, we pass the spool across and through the skein, now this way, now that way. Even so, to finish off the wall, we shall send embassies hither and thither, and everywhere, to disentangle matters. And tis with your yarn, and your skeins, and your spools, you think to appease so many bitter enmities, you silly women. If only you had common sense, you would always do in politics the same as we do with our yarn. Come, how is that, eh? First we wash the yarn to separate the grease and filth. Do the same with all bad citizens, sort them out and drive them forth with rods. Tis the refuse of the city. Then for all such as come crowding up in search of employments and offices, we must card them thoroughly. Then to bring them all to the same standard, pitch them pell-mell into the same basket, resident aliens or no, allies, debtors to the state, all mixed up together. Then, as for our colonies, you must think of them as so many isolated hanks. Find the ends of the separate threads, draw them to a centre here, wind them into one, make one great hank of the lot, out of which the public can weave itself a good, stout tunic. Is it not a sin and a shame? to see them carding and winding the state, these women who have neither art nor part in the burdens of the war. What? Wretched man? Why, it is a far heavier burden to us than to you. In the first place we bear sons who go off to fight far away from Athens. Enough said. Do not recall sad and sorry memories. Then, secondly, instead of enjoying the pleasures of love and making the best of our youth and beauty, we are left to languish far from our husbands, who are all with the army. But say no more of ourselves. What afflicts me is to see our girls growing old in lonely grief. Don't the men grow old too? That is not the same thing. When the soldier returns from the wars, even though he has white hair, he very soon finds a young wife. But a woman has only one summer. If she does not make hay while the sun shines, no one will afterwards have anything to say to her, and she spends her days consulting oracles that never send her a husband. But the old man who can still erect his organ? But you? Why don't you get done with it and die? You are rich. Go buy yourself a beer, and I will knead you a honey cake for Cerberus. Here, take this garland drenching him with water and this one too drenching him with water and these fillets drenching him with water what do you lack more step aboard the boat charon is waiting for you you're keeping him from pushing off oh, to treat me so scurvily what an insult i will go show myself to my fellow magistrates just as i am what are you blaming us for not having exposed you according to custom? Nay, console yourself. We will not fail to offer up the third day's sacrifice for you, first thing in the morning. Awake, friends of freedom. Let us hold ourselves I ready to act. I suspect a mighty peril. I foresee another tyranny like Hippias's. I am sore afraid the Laconians assembled here with Cleisthenes have by a stratagem of war, 
stirred up these women enemies of the gods to seize upon our treasury and the funds whereby i lived is it not a sin and a shame for them to interfere in advising the citizens to prate of shields and lances and to ally themselves with laconians fellows i trust no more than i would so many famished wolves the whole thing my friends is nothing else but an attempt to re-establish tyranny but i will never submit i will be on my guard for the future i will always carry a blade hidden under myrtle boughs i will post myself in the public square under arms shoulder to shoulder with aristogiton and now to make a start i must just break a few of that cursed old jade's teeth yonder nay never play the brave man else when you go back home your own mother won't know you but dear friends and allies first let us lay our burdens down then citizens all hear what i have to say i have useful counsel to give our city which deserves it well at my hands for the brilliant distinctions it has lavished on my girlhood at seven years of age i was bearer of the sacred vessels at ten i pounded barley for the altar of athena next clad in a robe of yellow silk i was little bared artemis at the baronia presently grown a tall handsome maiden they put a necklace of dried figs about my neck and i was basket-bearer so surely i am bound to give my best advice to athens what matters that i was born a woman if i can cure your misfortunes i pay my share of tolls and taxes by giving men to the state but you you miserable greybeards you contribute nothing to the public charges on the contrary you have wasted the treasure of our forefathers as it was called the treasure amassed in the days of the persian wars you pay nothing at all in return and into the bargain you endanger our lives and liberties by your mistakes have you one word to say for yourselves ah don't irritate me you there or i'll lay my slipper across your jaws and it's pretty heavy outrage upon outrage things are going from bad to worse let us punish the minxers every one of us that has a man's appendages to boast of come off with our tunics for a man must savour of manhood come my friends let us strip naked from head to foot courage i say we who in our day garrisoned lipsidrion let us be young again and shake off eld if we give them the least hold over us tis all up their audacity will know no bounds we shall see them building ships and fighting sea fights like artemisia nay if they want to mount and ride as cavalry we had best cashier the knights for indeed women excel in riding and have a fine firm seat for the gallop just think of all those squadrons of amazons micon has painted for us engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with men come then we must e'en fit collars to all these willing necks by the blessed goddesses if you anger me i will let loose the beast of my evil passions and a very hailstorm of blows will set you yelling for help come dames off tunics and quick's the word women must scent the savour of women in the throes of passion now just you dare to measure strength of me old greybeard and i warrant you you'll never eat garlic or black beans more no not a word my anger is at boiling point and i'll do with you what the beetle did with the eagle's eggs huh, i laugh at your threats so long as i have on my side lampito here and the noble theban my dear ismenia pass decree on decree you can do us no hurt you wretch abhorred of all your fellows why only yesterday on occasion of the feast of hecate i asked my neighbours of boeotia for one of their daughters for whom my girls have a lively liking a fine fat eel to wit and if they did not refuse all along of your silly decrees we shall never cease to suffer the like till someone gives you a neat trip up and breaks your neck for you 
End of Scene 2Scene three of Lysis Trata. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Lysis Trata by Aristophanes. Scenes. In a public square at Athens, afterwards before the gates of the Acropolis, and finally within the precincts of the citadel. Scene three within the precincts of the citadel. Chorus of Women, Addressing Lysistrata You, Lysistrata, you who are leader of our glorious enterprise, why do I see you coming towards me with so gloomy an air? Oh, tis the behaviour of these naughty women, tis the female heart and female weakness so discourages me. Tell us, tell us, what is it? I only tell the simple truth. What has happened so disconcerting? Come, tell your friends. Oh, the thing is so hard to tell, yet so impossible to conceal. Nay, never seek to hide any ill that has befallen our cause. To blurt it out in a word, we are in heat. Oh, Zeus. Oh, Zeus. What use calling upon Zeus? The thing is even as I say. I cannot stop them any longer from lusting after the men. They are all for deserting. The first I caught was slipping out by the postern gate near the cave of Pan. Another was letting herself down by a rope and pulley. A third was busy preparing her escape, while a fourth, perched on a bird's back, was just taking wing for Orsilochus's house when I seized her by the hair. One and all they are inventing excuses to be off home. Look! There goes one, trying to get out. Hello there. Whither away so fast? I want to go home. I have some lettuce wool in the house, which is getting all eaten up by the worms. Bah, you and your worms. Go back, I say. I will return immediately. I swear I will by the two goddesses. I only have just to spread it out on the bed. You shall not do anything of the kind. I say you shall not go. Must I leave my wool to spoil, then? Yes, if need be. Unhappy woman that I am, alas for my flax, I've left it at home, unstripped. So here's another trying to escape to go home and strip her flax forsooth. Oh, I swear by the goddess of light, the instant I have put it in condition, I will come straight back. You shall do nothing of the kind. If once you began, others would want to follow suit. Oh, goddess divine, Elethia, patroness of women in labor, stay, stay the birth till I have reached a spot less hallowed than Athene's mount. What mean you by these silly tales? I am going to have a child, now, this minute. But you were not pregnant yesterday. Well, I am today. Oh, let me go in search of the midwife, Lysistrata. Quick, quick. What is this fable you are telling me? Ah, what have you got there so hard? A male child. No, no, by Aphrodite, nothing of the sort. Why, it feels like something hollow, a pot or a kettle. Oh, you baggage, if you have not got the sacred helmet of Pallas. And you said you were with child. And so I am by Zeus, I am. Then why this helmet, pray? For fear my pains should seize me in the Acropolis. I mean to lay my eggs in this helmet, as the doves do. Excuses and pretenses every word. The thing's as clear as daylight. Anyway, you must stay here now till the fifth day, your day of purification. I cannot sleep any more in the Acropolis, now I have seen the snake that guards the temple. Ah, and these confounded owls with their dismal hooting. I cannot get a wink of rest, and I'm just dying of fatigue. You wicked women have done with your falsehoods. You want your husbands, that's plain enough. But don't you think they want you just as badly? They are spending dreadful nights. Oh, I know that well enough. But hold out, my dears, hold out. 
a little more patience and the victory will be ours an oracle promises us success if only we remain united shall i repeat the words yes tell us what the oracle declares silence then now when as the swallows fleeing before the hoopoos shall have all flocked together in one place and shall refrain them from all amorous commerce then will be the end of all the ills of life yea and zeus which doth thunder in the skies shall set above what was erst below what shall the men be underneath but if dissension do arise among the swallows and they take wing from the holy temple twill be said there is never a more wanton bird in all the world ye gods the prophecy is clear nay never let us be cast down by calamity let us be brave to bear and go back to our posts twere shameful indeed not to trust the promises of the oracle i want to tell you a fable they used to relate to me when i was a little boy this is it once upon a time there was a young man called Melanion, who hated the thought of marriage so sorely that he fled away to the wilds so he dwelt in the mountains wove himself nets kept a dog and caught hares he never never came back he had such a horror of women as chaste as melanion we loathe the jades just as much as he did you dear old woman i would fain kiss you i will set you crying without onions and give you a sound kicking <laughs> what a dense forest you have there pointing so was myronides one of the best bearded of men on this side his backside was all black and he terrified his enemies as much as formio i want to tell you a fable too to match yours about melanion once there was a certain man called timon a tough customer and a whimsical a true son of the furies with a face that seemed to glare out of a thorn bush he withdrew from the world because he couldn't abide bad men after vomiting a thousand curses at him he had a holy horror of ill-conditioned fellows but he was mighty tender towards women suppose i up and broke your jaw for you i'm not a bit afraid of you suppose i let fly a good kick at you oh, i should see your backside then you would see that for all my age it is very well attended to and all fresh singed smooth ho oh, there come quick come quick what is it why these cries a man a man i see him approaching all afire with the flames of love o oh, divine queen of cyprus paphos and cythera i pray you still be propitious to our emprise where is he this unknown foe yonder beside the temple of demeter yes indeed i see him but who is it look look does any of you recognize him i do i do tis her husband kinesias to work then be it your task to inflame and torture and torment him seductions caresses provocations refusals try every means grant every favour always accepting what is forbidden by our oath on the wine bowl have no fear i undertake the work well i will stay here to help you cajole the man and set his passions aflame the rest of you withdraw alas alas how am I tortured by spasm and rigid convulsion? Oh, I am racked on the wheel. Who is this that dares to pass our lines? It is I. What, a man? Yes, no doubt about it, a man. Be gone. But who are you that thus repulses me? The sentinel of the day. By all the gods, call Merhine hither. Call Mirhine hither, quotha? And pray, who are you? I am her husband, Kinesias, 
son of peon ah good day my dear friend your name is not unknown amongst us your wife has it for ever on her lips and she never touches an egg or an apple without saying it will be for kinesias really and truly yes indeed by aphrodite and if we fall to talking of men quick your wife declares oh all the rest they are good for nothing compared with kinesias oh i beseech you go and call her to me and what will you give me for my trouble this if you like handling his tool i will give you what i have there well well i will tell her to come quick oh be quick life has no more charms for me since she left my house i am sad sad when i go indoors it all seems so empty my victuals have lost their savour desire is eating out my heart i love him oh i love him but he won't let himself be loved no i shall not come mehine my little darling mehine what are you saying come down to me quick no indeed not i i call you mehine mehine will you not come why should you call me you do not want me not want to why my weapon stands stiff with desire good-bye oh mehine mehine in our child's name hear me at any rate hear the child little lad call your mother mammy 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 there listen don't you pity the poor child it's six days now you've never washed and never fed the child poor darling your father takes mighty little care of you come down dearest come down for the child's sake ah oh, what a thing it is to be a mother well well we must come down i suppose why how much younger and prettier she looks and how she looks at me so lovingly her cruelty and scorn only redouble my passion you are as sweet as your father is provoking let me kiss you my treasure mother's darling ah what a bad thing it is to let yourself be led away by other women why give me such pain and suffering and yourself into the bargain hands off sir everything is going to rack in ruin in the house i don't care but your web that's all being pecked to pieces by the cocks and hens don't you care for that precious little and aphrodite whose mysteries you have not celebrated for so long oh won't you come back home no at least not till a sound treaty put an end to the war well if you wish it so much why we'll make it your treaty well and good when that's done i will come home till then i am bound by the oath at any rate let's have a short time together no 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 all the same i cannot say i don't love you you love me then why refuse what i ask my little girl my sweet mehine you must be joking what before the child means carry the lad home there you see the child's gone there's nothing to hinder us let us to work but miserable man where where are we to do it in the cave of pan nothing could be better but how to purify myself before going back into the citadel nothing easier you can wash at the clexitra but my oath do you want me to perjure myself i take all responsibility never make yourself anxious well i'll be off then and find a bed for us oh tis not worth while we can lie on the ground surely no no bad man as you are i don't like your lying on the bare earth ah how the dear girl loves me mirhine coming back with the bed come get a bed quick i am going to undress but plague take it we must get a mattress a mattress oh no never mind no by artemis lie on the bare sacking never that were too squalid a kiss wait a minute oh by the great gods be quick back mirhine coming back with the mattress here's a mattress lie down i am just going to undress but but you've got no pillow i don't want one no no but i do oh dear oh dear they treat my poor penis for all the world 
like Heracles. Mirhine, coming back with a pillow. There, lift your head, dear. That's really everything. Is it everything, I wonder? Come, my treasure. I'm just unfastening my girdle, but remember what you promised me about making peace. Mind you keep your word. Yes, yes, upon my life I will. Why, you have no blanket. Great Zeus, what matter of that? Tis you I want to fuck. Never fear, directly, directly. I'll be back in no time. The woman will kill me with her blankets. Mirhine, coming back with a blanket. Now get up for one moment. But I tell you, our friend is up, all stiff and ready. Would you like me to send you? No, by Apollo, no, please. Yes, by Aphrodite, but I will, whether you wish it or no. Oh, great Zeus, may she soon be done? Mirhine, coming back with a flask of perfume. Hold out your hand. Now rub it in. Oh, in Apollo's name, I don't much like the smell of it. But perhaps twill improve when it's well rubbed in. It does not somehow smack of the marriage bed. There, what a scatterbrain I am, if I have not brought Rhodian perfumes. Never mind, dearest. Let be now. You're joking. Deuce take the man who first invented perfumes, say I. Mirhine, coming back with another flask. Here, take this bottle. I have a better already for your service, darling. Come, you provoking creature, to bed with you, and don't bring another thing. Coming, coming. I'm just slipping off my shoes. Dear boy, will you vote for peace? I'll think about it. Mirhine runs away. I'm a dead man. She's killing me. She is gone and left me in torment. I must have someone to fuck. I must. Ah, me. The loveliest of women has choused and cheated me. Poor little lad. Addressing his penis. How am I to give you what you want so badly? Where is Sinalopex? Quick man, get him a nurse. Do. Poor miserable wretch, balked in your amorousness. What tortures are yours? Ah, oh, you fill me with pity. Could any man's back and loins stand such a strain? His organs stand stiff and rigid, and there's never a wench to help him. Ye gods in heaven, what pains I suffer. Well, there it is. It is her doing that abandoned hussy. Nay, nay, rather say that, sweetest, dearest, darling. That dearest darling? No, no, that hussy, say I. Zeus, thou god of the skies, canst not let loose a hurricane to sweep them all up into the air and whirl them round, then drop them down, crash, and impale them on the point of his weapon. Say, where shall I find the senate and the praetanes? I am bearer of dispatches. But are you a man or a priapus, pray? Oh, but he's mighty simple. I am a herald, of course, I swear I am. And I come from Sparta, about making peace. But look, you are hiding a lance under your clothes, surely? No, nothing of the sort. Then why do you turn away like that and hold your cloak out from your body? Have you gotten swellings in the groin with your journey? By the twin brethren, the man's an old maniac. <laughs> oh, oh, my fine lad, why I can see it standing. Oh, fie. I tell you, no. But enough of this foolery. Well, what is it you have there, then? A Lacedaemonian Skytale. Oh, indeed. A Skytale, is it? Well, well, speak out frankly. I know all about these matters. How are things going at Sparta now? Why, everything is turned upside down at Sparta, and all the allies are half dead with lusting. We simply must have Pauline. What is the reason of it all? Is it the god Pan's doing? No, but Lampito's and the Spartan women's acting at her instigation. They have denied the men all access to their cunts. But whatever do you do? We are at our wit's end. We walk bent double, just as if we were carrying lanterns in a wind. 
the jades have sworn that we shall not so much as touch their cunts till we have all agreed to conclude peace. <laughs> so I see now. Tis a general conspiracy embracing all Greece. Go you back to Sparta, and bid them send envoys with plenary powers to treat for peace. I will urge our senators myself to name plenipotentiaries from us. And to persuade them? Why, I'll show them this. Pointing to his erect penis. What could be better? I fly at your command. No wild beast is there, no flame of fire, more fierce and untamable than woman. The panther is less savage and shameless. And yet, you dare to make war upon me, wretch, when you might have me for your most faithful friend and ally. Never, never can my hatred cease towards women. Well, please yourself. Still, I cannot bear to leave you all naked as you are. Folks would laugh at me. Come, I am going to put this tunic on you. You are right, upon my word. It was only in my confounded fit of rage I took it off. Now, at any rate, you look like a man, and they won't make fun of you. Ah, if you had not offended me so badly, I would take out that nasty insect you have in your eye for you. Oh, so that's what was annoying me so. Look, here's a ring. Just remove the insect and show it me. By Zeus, it has been hurting my eye this ever so long. Well, I agree. Though your manners are not over and above pleasant. Oh, what a huge, great gnat. Just look. It's from Trichorsis for sure. A thousand thanks. The creature was digging a regular well in my eye. Now it's gone, my tears flow freely. I will wipe them for you, bad, naughty man though you are. Now, just one kiss. No, a kiss? Certainly not. Just one, whether you like it or not. Oh... Those confounded women, how they do cajole us. How true the saying, "'Tis impossible to live with the baggages, impossible to live without em. Come, let us agree for the future not to regard each other any more as enemies. And to clinch the bargain, let us sing a choric song. We desire, Athenians, to speak ill of no man but on the contrary, to say much good of every one, and to do the like. We have had enough of misfortunes and calamities. Is there any man or woman wants a bit of money, two or three minus or so? Well, our purse is full. If only peace is concluded, the borrower will not have to pay back. Also, I am inviting to supper a few Caristian friends who are excellently well qualified. I have still a drop of good soup left, and a young porker I'm going to kill, and the flesh will be sweet and tender. I shall expect you at my house today. But first, away to the baths with you, you and your children. Then, come, all of you, ask no one's leave, but walk straight up, as if you were at home. Never fear, the door will be shut in your faces. Ah! Oh. Here come the envoys from Sparta with their long, flowing beards. Why, you would think they wore a cage between their thighs. Enter the Lacedaemonian envoys. Hail to you, first of all, Laconians. Then tell us how you fare. No need for many words. You see what a state we are in. Alas, the situation grows more and more strained. The intensity of the thing is just frightful. Tis beyond belief, but to work. Summon your commissioners, and let us patch up the best peace we may. Ah, our men too, like wrestlers in the arena, cannot endure a rag over their bellies. Tis an athlete's malady, which only exercise can remedy. Can anybody... Tell us where Lysistrata is. 
Surely she will have some compassion on our condition. Look, it is the very same complaint. Addressing the Athenian. Don't you feel of mornings a strong, nervous tension? Yes, and a dreadful, dreadful torture it is. Unless peace is made very soon, we shall find no resource but to fuck Cleisthenes. Take my advice and put on your clothes again. One of the fellows who mutilated the Hermie might see you. You are right. Quite right. There, I will slip on my tunic. Oh, what a terrible state we are in. Greeting to you, Laconian fellow sufferers. Laconian, addressing one of his countrymen. Ah, my boy, what a thing it would have been if these fellows had seen us just now when our tools were on full stand. Speak out, Laconians. What is it brings you here? We have come to treat for peace. Well said. We're of the same mind. Better call Lisa Strada, then. She's the only person will bring us to terms. Yes, yes and Lysistratus, into the bargain, if you will. Needless to call her, she has heard your voices, and here she comes. Hail, boldest and bravest of womankind. The time is come to show yourself, in turn uncompromising and conciliatory, exacting and yielding, haughty and condescending. Call up all your skill and artfulness, Lo, the foremost men in Hellas, seduced by your fascinations, are agreed to entrust you with a task of ending their quarrels. It will be an easy task, if only they refrain from mutual indulgence in masculine love. If they do, I shall know the fact at once. Now, where is the gentle goddess Peace? Lead hither the Laconian envoys. But, look you, no roughness or violence. Our husbands always behaved so boorishly. Bring them to me with smiles as women should. If any refuse to give you his hand, then catch him by the penis and draw him politely forward. Bring up the Athenians, too. You may take them just how you will. Laconians, approach, and you, Athenians, on my other side. Now, hearken all. I am but a woman, but I have good common sense. Nature has dowered me with discriminating judgment, which I have yet further developed, thanks to the wise teachings of my father and the elders of the city. First I must bring a reproach against you that applies equally to both sides. At Olympia, and Thermopylae, and Delphi, and a score of other places too numerous to mention, you celebrate before the same altars ceremonies common to all Hellenes. Yet you go cutting each other's throats and sacking Hellenic cities, when all the while the barbarian is yonder threatening you. That is my first point. Ah, ah, concupiscence is killing me. Now it is to you I address myself, Laconians. Have you forgotten how Pericletus, your own countryman, set a suppliant before our altars? How pale he was in his purple robes! He had come to crave an army of us. It was the time when Messenia was pressing you sore, and the sea-god was shaking the earth. Simon marched to your aid at the head of four thousand hoplites, and saved Lacedaemon. And, after such a service as that, you ravage the soil of your benefactors. They do wrong, very wrong, Lisa Strada. We do wrong, very wrong. Ah, great gods, what lovely thighs she has. And now a word to the Athenians. Have you no memory left of how, in the days when you wore the tunic of slaves, the Laconians came, spear in hand, and slew a host of Thessalians and partisans of Hippias the tyrant? They, and they only, fought on your side on that eventful day, 
they delivered you from despotism and thanks to them our nation could change the short tunic of the slave for the long cloak of the free man i have never seen a woman of more gracious dignity i have never seen a woman with a finer cunt bound by such ties of mutual kindness how can you bear to be at war stop stay the hateful strife be reconciled what hinders you we are quite ready if they will give us back our rampart what rampart my dear man pylos which we have been asking for and craving ever so long in the sea god's name you shall never have it agree my friends agree but then what city shall we be able to stir up trouble in ask for another place in exchange ah that's the ticket well to begin with give us a kindness the maliac gulf adjoining and the two legs of megara oh surely surely not all that my dear sir come to terms never make a difficulty of two legs more or less well i'm ready now to off coat and cultivate my land and i too to dung it to start with that's just what you shall do once peace is signed so if you really want to make it go consult your allies about the matter what allies i should like to know why we are all on the stand not one but is mad to be fucking what we all want is to be a bed with our wives how should our allies fail to second our project and ours the same for certain sure the Charisteans first and foremost by the gods well said indeed now be off to purify yourselves for entering the acropolis where the women invite you to supper we will empty our provision baskets to do you honor at table you will exchange oaths and pledges then each man will go home with his wife come along then and as quick as may be lead on i'm your man quick quick's the word say i embroidered stuffs and dainty tunics and flowing gowns and golden ornaments everything i have i offer them to you with all my heart take them all for your children for your girls against they are chosen basket bearers to the goddess i invite you every one to enter come in and choose whatever you will there is nothing so well fastened you cannot break the seals and carry away the contents look about you everywhere you won't find a blessed thing unless you have sharper eyes than mine and if any of you lacks corn to feed his slaves and his young and numerous family why i have a few grains of wheat at home let him take what i have to give a big twelve pound loaf included so let my poor neighbors all come with bags and wallets my man manus shall give them corn but i warn them not to come near my door or beware the dog i say you open the door go your way i tell you why bless me they're sitting down now i shall have to singe em with my torch to make em stir what an impudent lot of fellows i don't mean to budge well as you must stop and i don't want to offend you but you'll see some queer sights well and good i've no objection no no you must be off or i'll tear your hair out i will be off, I say, and don't annoy the Laconian envoys. They're just coming out of the banquet hall. Such a merry banquet I've never seen before. The Laconians were simply charming. After the drink is in, why, we're all wise men, all. It's only natural to be sure for sober we're all fools. Take my advice, my friend fellow countrymen our envoys should always be drunk we go to sparta we enter the city sober 
Why, we must be picking a quarrel directly. We don't understand what they say to us. We imagine a lot they don't say at all. We report home all wrong, all topsy-turvy. But look you, today it's quite different. We're enchanted whatever happens. Instead of Clitagoras, they might sing us Telamon. We should clap our hands just the same. A perjury or two into the bargain? La! What does that matter to merry companions in their cups? But here they are back again. Will you be gone, you loafing scoundrels? Aha! Here's the company coming out already. My dear sweet friend, come, take your flute in hand. I would fain dance and sing my best in honor of the Athenians and our noble selves. Yes, take your flute into God's name. What a delight to see him dance. O oh, Mnemosyne, inspire these men. Inspire my muse, who knows our exploits and those of the Athenians. With what a godlike ardour did they swoop down at Artemisium on the ships of the Medes! What a glorious victory was that! For the soldiers of Leonidas, they were like fierce wild boars wetting their tushes. The sweat ran down their faces and drenched all their limbs, for verily the Persians were as many as the sands of the seashore. O oh, Artemis, huntress queen, whose arrows pierced the denizens of the woods, virgin goddess, be thou favourable to the peace we here conclude. Through thee may our hearts be long united. May this treaty draw close for ever the bonds of a happy friendship. No more wiles and stratagems. Aid us, O oh, aid us, maiden huntress. All is for the best. And now, Laconians, take your wives away home with you, and you, Athenians, yours. May husband live happily with wife, and wife with husband. Dance, dance to celebrate our bliss, and let us be heedful to avoid like mistakes for the future. Appear, appear, dancers, and the grace is with you. Let us invoke, one and all, Artemis, and her heavenly brother, gracious Apollo, patron of the dance, and Dionysus, whose eye darts flame as he steps forward surrounded by the maned maids, and Zeus, who wields the flashing lightning, and his august, thrice-blessed spouse, the Queen of Heaven. These let us invoke, and all the other gods, calling all the inhabitants of the skies to witness the noble peace now concluded under the fond auspices of Aphrodite. Iopian, Iopian, Dance, leap, as in honour of a victory won. Evoe, evoe, and you, our Laconian guests, sing us a new and inspiring strain. Leave once more, O oh, leave once more the noble height of Tagetus, O oh, muse of Lacedaemon, and join us in singing the praises of Apollo of Amyclae, and Athena of the Brazen House, and the gallant twin sons of Tyndarus, who practice arms on the banks of Eurotus River. Haste, haste hither with nimble-footed pace. Let us sing of Sparta, the city that delights in choruses divinely sweet and graceful dances when our maidens bound lightly by the riverside, like frolicsome fillies beating the ground with rapid steps and shaking their long locks in the wind, as bacchants wave their wands in the wild revels of the wine-god. At their head, O chaste and beauteous goddess, 
daughter of latona artemis do thou lead the song and dance a fillet binding thy waving tresses appear in thy loveliness leap like a fawn strike thy divine hands together to animate the dance and aid us to renown the valiant goddess of battles great athene of the brazen house End of scene three. End of Lee Sistrata by Aristophanes.